Hi everybody, this is Liz Scott and welcome to Open Mic Marketing with Liz Scott. It's a super sunny day here in Toronto, so thank you for everybody for joining the call. Uh, I know it's not always easy when it's a nice day out, but I think you're going to find today's information very valuable. Uh, so this is our seventh Open Mic Marketing, which I'm super excited to be hosting. And so while we're waiting for everyone to join the call and get settled, for those of you who are new to Open Mic, let me just tell you a little bit about how it works. So you have the option of raising your hand and I will unmute you because right now everyone on the call is muted just for noise purposes. And you can ask your question live. Uh, but what I'm finding is a lot of people prefer not to ask the question live. So you've got a couple of other options. One is that you can open the chat box and type in your question anonymously. And I will read it out loud to the group and answer it. And the other thing that's been happening quite a bit is people are emailing me questions that they want me to read out loud and to answer them. Uh, not everybody can be on the call live, but if, you, um, if you're interested, I can send you the recording. So those are some of the ways that you can interact with me. So for those of you who don't know me, let me give you a little bit of background. I am often referred to as North America's business growth guru, and I specialize in helping entrepreneurs and small business owners grow their businesses through fundamentally helping them to fill their funnel. So I focus on marketing, sales, and business development anywhere from startup to seven figures to help you get your business to the next level. So I spent 25 years in the corporate world as a sales and marketing uh, vice president and I worked for a number of Fortune 500 companies as well as some startup organizations. So I really got the best of both worlds to see what sales, marketing, and biz dev techniques work versus those that don't. Uh, so then I started my own business about four years ago called Affinity Coach Consulting, the business fire starter. And I've been running my business ever since. I am an international speaker and best-selling author. I run a women's group called the Women's Entrepreneurial Network North. So for those of you who live in the GTA or the Toronto area, um, you're more than welcome to connect with me. And I run Open Mic Marketing, which is really just a way to give back to the entrepreneurial community, give you the opportunity to get some insight and get your questions answered and to give you a little bit about who I am. So having said that, we do have a bunch of questions that were left over from last time. We, we absolutely had so many questions that we ran out of time, so I did promise that I would get to those questions this month. So we're going to start off with some of those questions, and then I will continue to take the questions that have been typed into the chat box or something that you want to answer live. Okay, so the first question from last month is, I know that I should be active on social media for my business, but it seems like it takes a long time to do it, and I'm not really even sure what I should be saying or what the right things are to say for my business. How important is it for me to be on social media for my business? Okay, so great question. I think the second or the third open mic marketing session that I did, we dedicated it specifically to social media questions. So, so let me answer the question this way. Um, a social media presence for your business is always great. It depends on what it is that you're trying to accomplish and it depends on what kind of a business you run. So if you're running something like a real estate agency or something that's very visual if you're an interior designer anything that's visual you probably want to be on Instagram or snapchat because you want people or Pinterest you want people to be able to see before and after pictures 
If you're running business to business, you probably want to be on LinkedIn, but for the vast majority of small business owners, Facebook is still the go-to social media. For early stage businesses, I would say it's more important just to get on those social media sites and just ask a lot of questions of your target audience and start to interact with them. So you're really not trying to establish yourself as an industry expert. You're really not trying to promote your business right away. But you do want to engage with your social media community. As you expand your business and you start to get clients, then you want to start to establish yourself as a thought leader and there's a number of ways that you can do that through content, through blogs, through referring them back to your website. Um, and if you're running any sort of events, social media is great for that. So my advice to you would be Pick one social media platform because you're right, absolutely right. It is a lot of work to keep up with a lot of social media and it's always changing. So start with one that you think is going to be the most relevant. You haven't told me what your business is, so it's hard for me to make a recommendation. Um, but I'm happy if you want to email me and, and we can chat about it offline. Start with one, start to engage with your community. If you're running any events, uh, then I would post that. You can share content of other people and that will give you a good sense of how to get started. I wouldn't spend more than 20 to 30 minutes a couple of times a week if you're in the early stages of your business, which it sounds like you are. Um, as you grow, as I said, then you have the capability of layering in more social media platforms or going deeper in terms of how often you post and what kind of content you post. So hopefully that's helpful to you and it answers your question. Uh, and I do apologize again that I wasn't able to get to your question last week or last month, but I'm glad that we could do that now. So the next question from John B is, how often should I be updating my website? Is it important to have a new look? I've been in business for the past two years, but I think my website is looking tired. I'm a lifestyle and living coach. Okay. Websites are always tricky and it can be costly and time consuming to make a lot of changes. So you've been in business for a couple of years. So I would say, based on my experience working with a lot of coaches as well as small business owners and entrepreneurs, that it likely is time to refresh your website in some capacity if you haven't done it for the past couple of years. Because of course, our businesses are organic and we're always tweaking based on what's going on in the marketplace. So new things come up, disruptors come into play, people have different interests. So you don't necessarily have to do a huge revamp, but I would make sure that your content is relevant and that it's up to date. One of the great things that you can do is just change your banner on your website every once in a while so that it looks like it's new. Uh, you have the capability of layering in videos, uh, which somebody sent in a question about videos, so we're going to address that later, or updating your blog so it looks like and there is, in fact, new content on your website. So I wouldn't get super hung up on revamping your entire website because, of course, if you've been in business a couple of years, you've probably got a lot of keywords set up as well. So you don't want to be disruptive to your SEO process. Uh, my suggestion would be, as I said, update some of the visuals and update and refresh your content so that it's relevant. A lot of newer entrepreneurs, and I still consider two years of business to be a newer entrepreneur, waste so much time and money. I mean, you can go down a rabbit hole with your website and I've literally seen new entrepreneurs spend thousands of dollars and months and months of time 
when they're really not even sure what their niche is or what their messaging is or how their target audience is going to respond to the kinds of things that they're saying. So my advice is to keep your website simplistic where you can layer things in, you can add tabs, you can remove tabs, you can change visuals based on what's going on with your target audience and based on what's going on within your own business. So hopefully that uh, is helpful to you. Uh, let me just open it up before I continue with some of last month's and see where we're at. Okay, perfect. So the next question is, again from last month, so I'm a new business owner and I don't know how much I should charge for my services as a web designer and a graphic artist. How do I figure this out? Thanks. Jan G. Well, this is a very common thing. I mean, I hear this all the time, and I and I do run a program where I talk specifically in one of the modules. It's my Fast Fifty program uh, about pricing, packaging, and leveraging. So, new entrepreneurs always struggle with what should I what should I be charging for my services and you are a web designer and graphic artist okay so for web design and graphic artists there is a lot of competition so the first thing that I would do is try to find out what the standard rates are that people are charging and there's a number of ways that you can do that um, because you want to make sure that when you're first starting out you're competitive the second thing is I think it's okay to charge a little bit less when you're first starting out because you do want to get your first few clients. Um, but what you don't want to do is continue to do that on an ongoing basis because what happens is you sabotage the entire marketplace. So you actually end up bringing the entire market down, number one. Number two, you know, I'm all about value. So you need to understand what the value of your services are, not just taking a look at what the price point is. And you have to be able to have a sustainable living. So, you know, I see lots of people who charge bare bones because they think that that's going to get them lots of business. But in fact, what it does is, as I said, it lowers the entire marketplace down and it's not sustainable for you. So my recommendations would be to um, price accordingly slightly below what the average people who have been in business maybe three, four, five years are doing. Get your first four or five clients, which you'll probably get through referrals or word of mouth. And then gradually, as you get to understand what your value is to those people, um, get to a price point that makes sense for you. I will say that the pricing, packaging, and leveraging is very important. I know that there's a lot of people out there who charge by the hour, and that can become very problematic because you will burn out. There's only so many hours in a day, and if you start to trade time for dollars, then you have a finite capacity in terms of the numbers of clients that you can take on. And that's a pitfall that I see over and over and over again. So again, happy to have a conversation with you offline if that makes sense for you, um, but those are my preliminary recommendations for you. So thank you. Thank you for submitting that question. Okay, and then the final question from last month is, hey Liz, my kids are 9 and 11 and they're going to be home for this summer. <laughs> this comes up every, this question comes up to me all the time whenever we start to get into the summer months. Uh, sorry, my kids are 9 and 11 and they're going to be home for the summer. How can I avoid distractions while I try to run my business over the summer? Uh, I wish I had a magic bullet for this. I really do. I don't have a magic bullet. Um, 
but I'll give you some recommendations. You know, summer is summer is a, is a is an interesting time period for all small business owners, particularly if you live in Canada or somewhere where the weather is not always amazing during the winter time. You have to be really disciplined and you have to block your time. So I would suggest that you get super vigilant with your calendar over the summer. I would suggest that you put time periods in where you interact with your kids. So they're 9 and 11. They're going to be able to, you know, entertain themselves a little bit. Um, so to avoid interruptions, perhaps you say something like, you know, I'm working between 9 and 10, but at 10, 15, you know, we'll have a snack together and we'll chat or we'll catch up on our day. It really comes down to discipline and blocking. I know that there's a number of apps on Android and iPhone that you can uh, use to schedule your time. Um, I have a friend who is a professional organizer and she just said set an egg timer, right? Like just or set your phone and just block off a half an hour or 45 minutes so that you can get some stuff done and then feel free to, to interact. So there's a number of different things that you can do. But you know, I think the most important thing to do is to understand that you do need to be a little bit more flexible when you have children who are at home um, and set boundaries with them. The other thing you can do, and you know, I'm seeing this sort of tongue in cheek, but there's always camps. So if you're working on a particular project or you know that there's a period of time where you really need to focus on your business, you can put them in camp and then the subsequent weeks um, maybe spend a little bit more time with them. But do understand this comes up all the time. Everybody that I have as a client and even people that I don't have as clients who have children who come home for the summer, even university students who come back, believe it or not, are constantly interrupting their parents. Um, so again, my suggestions for that would be to block your time off, you know, get an app or an egg timer or time your phone, set your tasks accordingly. Um, you know, you can also do things in the evening if your spouse doesn't work from home. So maybe after dinner, so maybe you take a couple hours off in the afternoon, but then after dinner while the kids are watching a movie, they're outside playing and your spouse is home, you can catch up that way. As I said, I, I don't have the magic pill for you. It's just one of those things that we do as a small business owner. And I'm just going to add one more thing. Uh, there are a number of co-working, co-shared office spaces that are opening up all over North America. Uh, and so if you, if your kids are old enough, you always have the option of going, you know, if there's hot desks you can rent out for an hour, a half a day, a day. So you always have the option of taking yourself or go to a Starbucks or whatever, but you always have the option of taking yourself out of the physical location for a period of time so that you can focus as well. So thanks for that question. Uh, it always comes up and I was pretty sure it was going to come up again and it did. Okay, so that sort of takes care of everything that we chatted about last month that was left over. So Susan S. sent an email saying, what do you recommend that I use for a lead magnet? Is there something that works better than something else? Please let me know. Okay, so let me just clarify for those of you who might be really new entrepreneurs what a lead magnet is. So a lead magnet is something that you create to capture people's attention with the idea of getting them into your marketing funnel. So it usually looks like um, an article, an ebook, a contest, a quiz, something that gets the interest of people who ideally are coming to your website. And then what you want to do with your lead magnet is you want to capture their email address, sometimes their phone numbers, but 
people are a little bit reluctant to do that, but, but you really want to capture their email address so that they go into your marketing funnel and don't get hung up by the terminology if you don't know what a marketing funnel is, but you want to collect their information so that you can follow up with them, so that you can reach out to them and touch them and continue the conversation with them. Uh, so the question is, is one lead magnet better than the other lead magnet? You know, uh, contests and quizzes seem to be really popular right now. Uh, I would say the lead magnet really depends on what stage of business you're in and how much time and money you can use to create your lead magnet. So if you're newer and you don't have a lot of time and money, then it could just be something very simplistic. Like the top tips are great. I love the top 10 tips. What are the top 10 tips that you can offer? Or top 10 mistakes that people make. And that can be a one or a two pager. It's very easy to create and it's very impactful. If on the other hand, you have uh, a fair amount of time and money that you can invest, Ebooks are great. Um, professional videos are great. Or, you know, a lot of people are creating their own video. So instead of doing a stagnant document that talks about the top 10 tips for your industry, a video where you're talking is great because video showcases you and your personality. And it's hard to get that from a static document. So you're, you're going to see a big trend, and I think we have another question that came in um, about a lot of people doing video now. And the reason they're doing that is because it showcases your personality and it gives a sense of who you are. So there isn't necessarily one lead magnet that's more impactful than the other. You know, my advice would be if you're starting out, as I said, do tips and tricks, do a quick video. Uh, and if you're a little bit more advanced, then you know you're going to you're going to want to do something in a bit more detail, an ebook or something of that nature, maybe a webinar. A lot of people do that. A lot of people pre-record webinars and then they offer that as their lead magnet. The other thing that I'll say about your lead magnet is you you're going to want to change it up. So don't leave it as your lead magnet for too long. I would say probably six to 12 months and you've played that out. And then you can always have it as a download on your website, but it's not the most predominant one. So it's not the one that you have the pop up when people go to your website. So hopefully that answers your question in terms of what a lead magnet is and what the best one to use is. And interestingly enough, the next question actually is about a video. So let's read. I'm just checking the panel to see if anybody's going to hand up. Uh, okay, so the next question is from Janine. And she says, I see a lot of people are using Facebook Live or some kind of video on social media. Should I be doing this for my business? Uh, that's a great question. Facebook Live seems to have been super popular like about six months ago. I'm not seeing it quite as much. I was seeing for a long time people doing Facebook Live in their cars. Um, and I'm not really sure what that trend was about. I mean, the idea of Facebook Live really is you're actually at a live event. So if you're putting on an event or you're showcasing an event, or you've got something specific that you want to capture the crowd and the excitement, then yeah, I would say Facebook Live it. Um, you know, be careful because it is live, so things happen when you're videoing things live. Um, but in terms of general video to showcase your business, as I just said, so that's interesting that it just came up, I think it's a great way to showcase your personality. I think that a lot of people these days find that video is easier because it's faster. So people just don't want to read anymore. They don't want to read reams and reams of documents. So anything that's visual is great. There's also visual learners. 
Um, but, you know, I'm going to say that if you're going to do a video, make it professional. I'm not saying you have to go to a professional organization, but make sure that you've positioned the camera so that you're getting sort of the the focus of the camera is sort of eye level for you so it doesn't look like it's out of focus or disproportionate to your body. Uh, the other warning that I will give you is try to have a neutral background when you're videotaping. And the other sort of drawback to video is that, I, and I don't have the statistic in front of me, but I think it's something like over 60% open all of their email, social media from a mobile device. So I want to caution you because I've seen this before and I've had clients who have done this, that they do the video and for some reason when you open it on a mobile device, whether it's your phone or, or a tablet, um, it, it doesn't translate properly. And so that actually hurts you. It makes you look less professional. The second thing is that YouTube has now stripped out their capability to put text on video. So a lot of people just can't have a video playing. They're in a place where they're in public, they're on the subway, they're you know, somewhere where they can visually see, but they can't hear what you're saying. So that's one of the drawbacks to video is that, you know, you can't sort of understand all of the capabilities if you're opening it on a mobile device. However, the great thing about video is that you can always put it on your website. So if people do want to go to your website and listen to it, so you can do a teaser and then say if you want more information, go to, go to my website and you can watch the entire thing. So I do think that video is super impactful. Um, I think it's a great idea, and I recommend, yeah, go ahead and do it. Get yourself out there. Uh, sorry, we've got a lot of questions, and there's just no way that I'm going to be able to get to them all again. So maybe I have to go back to opening it up for an hour. I made it a bit shorter, but I think I'm going to have to go uh, a little bit a little bit longer. Okay, so the last question that I'm going to read for today, and then I will absolutely carry over for July, is um, they didn't they didn't give me their name. I'm at the point in my business where I need to get a customer management program. I don't want to spend a lot of money. I have about 120 clients so far. What do you recommend? Okay, so this is a great question. Uh, 120 clients is amazing, so congratulations, although I don't know what your business is, but to get 120 clients is, is pretty fantastic. So this is called a customer relationship management, and usually people start off by doing it on a sheet of paper, or they have an Excel spreadsheet, um, they may be tracking it through their email list. But there comes a point where you need to communicate and manage what's going on with your clients. So what did you sell them? What is all their relevant information, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's a number of different ways that you can do this. But, you know, my philosophy is, and I came from corporate, so I know Salesforce and Hub and Infusionsoft and all of those really, really big platforms that cost a lot of money. And it's great for the corporate world, but unless you've got thousands of records, it's way, way, way overkill and highly, challenge, highly challenging to manage. So there's a couple of um, free ones and there's a couple of ones that are very, very, very inexpensive. So I'm going to give you three, and uh, if you can't get the, the exact spelling and things, then feel free to email me and I will give them to you. So the first one is Albert, A-L-B-E-R-T-C-R-M, albertcrm.com. The next one is Insightly, I-N-S-I-G-H-T-L-Y. And the final one is High Rise IQ, H I G H 
R-I-S-E-I-Q.com. They're all either free up to a certain point or very, very reasonably priced if you're so interested. And again, email me if you have any questions. So we are officially out of time. I do want to remind you that if you're interested in a complimentary business growth strategy session with me, shoot me an email at lscott at affinitycoach.com. Just put strategy session in the header and I will get back to you to set something up. And our next open mic marketing session is going to be on July the 12th at noon Eastern Standard Time. And I hope that you all can join us. And I'm super happy that you took the time to come out today. And I will speak with everyone soon. Have an amazing day. Take care.